All right, hello again, pre-calculus people. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about uh, more with quadratics. I, this is not really a pre-calculus thing, but it is a technique that isn't always covered much in algebra. It's called completing the square. Basically what this does, it, it allows us a way to find the vertex of a quadratic. Okay, and remember we're starting with uh, standard form or general form, depending on, on what you call it. So we're starting with that ax squared plus bx plus c. And what you want to find, we want to turn that into vertex form, which is a times x minus h quantity squared uh, plus k. Okay, where that hk is the vertex. Okay, now the way we do this, again, these are the steps, and if you need to pause the video to take a picture or what have you, the, these are going to be the steps here. But the reason this works is going back to our factoring bit. So like just real quick, I'm going to slide this down just a little bit to give me a blank piece of paper. If we have something like uh, x squared plus 10x plus 25, and I ask you to factor that, you would most likely tell me that that was going to be x plus 5 times x plus 5 or x plus 5 quantity squared. We call this a perfect square trinomial because it factors out to be a perfect square. So what we want to do is we want to take an equation that we're given and kind of turn it into something that can be factored even if it can't be factored the way it's written right there. Okay, so that's kind of what it's kind of a preview of, of what this is going to look like. So again, here, here are the steps. I'm not going to read these out to you because we're going to kind of do the steps. But the way I always start this is, and it just visually makes it easier, I think, is start off and literally just separate out the equation and kind of leave a space. So we're going to put the two x terms together. Literally leave a space and then put the rest of it, that plus one, kind of on the outside. What I want to do is I want to add a number here in this space that will make it factor as a perfect square. Now, notice on, on this example that I kind of did up here at the top, notice that number that we added, that 25, comes from half of 10, because 10 divided by 2 is 5 and then five squared is 25. So that's, that gives us our key. If we take whatever our B value is, if we divide it by two and square it, then we have a perfect square trinomial, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna take my B value, which is six, and divide it by two, so six over two, in this case is just three. And then whatever that ends up being, I'm going to square it and I'm going to add 9 into that space. Okay, so it's going to look like this. So it's going to look like um, x squared plus 6x plus 9. Now, remember, we just added a, a random number here, but so we've changed the equation. So to undo that, we have to subtract the same number on the outside. That's always going to be the case, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to, whatever we add in here, and, we're, and we'll always add it here, we're going to subtract that same thing on the outside. Always, always, always. Okay? Now we just factor it. And again, even if you didn't, if you just looked at that, we know how to factor that. That's just going to be x plus 3 squared. And then we clean that up. 1 minus 9 is negative 8. And that's my vertex form. And notice that is in the format of my vertex equation. So that means my vertex is hk, in this case, negative 3, negative 8. Remember, the h value is always going to change signs. The k is going to stay the same. Okay? So that is the process. And you do the process every single time. Again, I like separating it out first because I think it gives you a good visual of putting something there, 
And then once you put that, once you figure out that thing, and again, it's that half B squared, then it just factors and cleans up. Okay, so let's go and do the next one. So again, I'm going to rewrite it. I'm just going to kind of separate those X terms out and leave a space. What's my B value? In this case, it's negative 20. So it would be negative 10. And notice negative 10 squared is 100. So that's going to go in that space. So I'm just going to write that just, just, just the way it is. And again, we're always adding that number inside and then subtracting it on the outside. Factor. And again, we know what this is going to factor to because it's negative 10 and negative 10. So it's x minus 10 squared. Clean up the outside. It's plus 7. And then write your vertex. Now, before I go and do a couple more examples, I do want to point one thing out. Notice this number here, that initial b over 2 value, ended up here in my final, in my final format. And that number here ended up here. That is always going to be the case. Okay, even if this number ends up being a fraction, and clearly if your B value is odd, you're going to get a fraction. It doesn't matter. Whatever that B value is, including the sign, if it's positive or negative, is going to be here in your final answer. Okay, so let's go and do, I've got three more examples for you. One of them with a fraction. So let's go and do this top one up here and see what that looks like. It's the exact same process though, folks. Again, the process does not change. So here, again, I'm going to rewrite it and leave the space. Okay, my B value in this case is negative 9, so B over 2 is negative 9 over 2. I'm going to leave it as a fraction. If you want to use a decimal, you can. I, I think most of your teachers are going to prefer fractions, uh, but a decimal is valid. And then again, remember, if we square that, negative 9 over 2 squared is 81 over 4. Remember, square the top and the bottom. So this is going to be x squared minus 9x plus 81 over 4. Again, we're always adding on the inside, and we're always subtracting on the outside. And remember what I said just a second ago, folks, whatever that b over 2, whatever this number is right here, this is going to end up being how you factor it every time. How about that little... So if I factor this, this is going to come out to be x minus 9 over 2 quantity squared plus, and here, so obviously we need to clean this up. So we can do 9 over 1 minus 81 over 4, get a common denominator, multiply those by 4, 36 over 4 minus 81 over 4, and that becomes uh, 45 over 4 negative 45 over 4. So it's minus 45 over 4. So that's it. You're, you're done. And so my vertex would be, remember, change the sign of the inside, positive 9 over 2, comma, negative 45 over 4. Okay, whatever that b over 2 value is, is going to be in your factor. Even if it's a weird fraction, it's always going to work the same way. Now, obviously, those first three examples were just with a is equal to 1, so my leading coefficient of x squared was just 1, so that's kind of the, the, 
Simple case, what happens if you have an A not equal to one? Okay, I'm gonna bring this up to you real quick. And again, if you need to take a picture of this or pause the video, you can, but this is kind of where this warning is. If your A is not one, we are going to factor that A out of the first two terms. Still leave a space, and I'm not, we're not gonna call this a GCF because we're not taking it out of all, of, uh, of all three terms just out of those first two and just the coefficient, okay? So again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna re chart the way, I, the way I have been, leave a space. So three X squared minus 12 X, leave a space minus one. And then you say, well, hold on a minute here. I, I just want to play an X squared so I can do my, so I can do my, my, my little trick. So notice I can divide both of those by three don't worry about the x. We want the x squared so we can factor it. So we're only taking the 3 out. It'd be minus 4x. Okay. And now we do the same thing. So now I got my b value is negative 4. So b over 2 is negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. And remember, we want, b, we want that number squared. So it'd be 4. So it's going to be 3 times x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now here is the wrinkle. Okay. Now we're still going to subtract, and we're still subtracting the 4, but we're not just adding 4 in this case. We're really adding 3 times 4. So I'm, just, I'm, so I'm really subtracting 12 is what I'm doing. Okay. And again, we're going to clean that up. So 3 times x squared minus 4x plus 4, sorry, 3 times x minus 2 squared. Remember, that's how we factor that, x minus 2 squared. And then we clean this up, negative 1 minus 12 would be minus 13. And then my, my vertex would be 2 comma negative 13. Last one, if you want to pause the video and go and try to do this one by yourself, it's the same process. And then I'll go through the answer here in just a couple seconds. So we got 2x squared plus 16x plus 33. Again, just separate them out. Factor out that leading coefficient, factor out that 2. My new b value, my b is 2. So we got b over 2 is 4. And then 4 squared is 16. So I have 2 times x squared plus 8x plus 16, plus 33, minus, again, 2 times 16, which would be 32. Now we factor it, and we know, again, whatever that b over 2 value is, that's going to be in my factor. x plus 4 squared, and then 33 minus 32, would be plus one. That is the process of completing the square. Um, again, simple process. You do the same thing every time. That b over two value, divide it by, square it, add it on the inside, subtract it on the outside, factor using that b over two value, and then you can write the vertex. If you have questions, as always, please come to tutoring, ask some questions during class. Until next time, stay safe.